some of you guys have so much stuff going on in your life. You're like, I don't know, I can't handle one more thing. I can't handle one more thing. But you can. You can. God, God, God made you stronger than you think you are. But there does hit a point when you go, I literally cannot handle one more thing. And this is why he gives us his spirit. God comes and lives inside of us to make us stronger than we are by ourselves. And when we worship, we get ourselves in line with what God is doing. Let's, let's just say Miranda here is God, right? And, 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 and things, things are going wrong in my life. And all I can see is my problems. And all I can see is what's going on. When I worship, what happens is I put myself in line with God. And then what I see is God. And the problems start to fade in the bigness of who he is. That's what worship does. That's why we have worship on a Wednesday. It's not so you can just have some music to prep you for a message. It's because there's things in your life that are going on, and you need keys to see those things change, to see you change. And worship does that. Let me ask you this. How many of you guys know that you would be in a much worse place today if it wasn't for something that God has done for you at 418. Raise your hand. If you know for a fact that you'd be in a much worse place today if it wasn't for something that God has done for you at 418. The reason why I'm asking you that is because we're going into this series on culture. And, and, and we're talking about who we are as, as 418, who we are as a group, who, who, who God has called us to be. And one of the things that God has called us to do and called us to be is love people. Dominic, Dominic's up here. He's trying to get you guys pumped. He's like, how many guys love people? And he goes, meh. How many guys love food? Oh, my sweet Jesus, you know I do. I'm talking to you, Jesus. You know I love, I mean, it's just, it, exactly. Why, 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 why is it, why is it that when pizza, okay, that's enough. Why is it that when, 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 when pizza is the thing, we can get so excited, but when people are the thing, it's kind of like, meh. You know why? Because pizza never hurt us. Okay, it hurt me one time. <laughs> and it wasn't pizza, it was a calzone, which is a, which is a, which is a pizza burrito. One time I was, I was eating a pizza burrito called a calzone, and I was so hungry. I was so excited. And my mom just brought them fresh out of the oven. I don't know if you know what a calzone is, but it's, it's basically the crust of the pizza on the outside. It's got the sauce, the cheese, and all the goodies on the inside instead of the outside. And I bit into that sucker, and it was just out of the oven. The cheese was still melted, and it stuck to the top of my mouth. And I am crying and crying and crying. But that wasn't the worst part. The worst part was that I had to go to church for that night because we had night services. And they had cookies in the kids' class. And I couldn't eat any because my mouth was a mangled mess of meat. <laughs> Not actual meat. Not like livestock meat. It was my meat dangling in my mouth. Sorry, TMI. It's still fresh for me. Still fresh for me. It's like fresh meat. It's nasty. But pizza doesn't hurt us. People hurt us. It annoys me sometimes when I see animal people. And they're like, they're like, my dog is smarter than your honor student. I'm like, I highly doubt that. <laughs> Pretty sure they're not. Like, my dog is, you know, my dog is my child. Pretty sure that's disgusting. <laughs> not sure how that happened biologically. Might want to get yourself checked out. I, it, it bugs me. Why? Why? Because we, 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 put, we put everything else in an improper place instead of putting the right thing and the right priority and the top priority for God as people. 
If you're taking notes, which you should be because it helps you remember things, the title of this message is We Love People. But if I were to have a second title for this, it would be The Mission, The Mess, and The Method. The Mission, The Mess, and The Method. Here's the mission. God sent his son Jesus to die for people. He didn't see, send his son Jesus to die for Harambe. I know some people think he did. Too soon? He, he didn't send Jesus to die for the whales. He didn't send Jesus to die for the blue-footed raccoon out in the middle of the Namibia desert. Like, that, that's not what he sent Jesus to. He sent Jesus to die for people because people is the mission. And when we fall in love with Jesus, we should take on the mission. That's what he's called us to. That's what he's called us. He's called us to the mission of meeting the needs of people. Because people need help. I had an experience recently with a student and that, that was just broken. I'm not talking about like crying about nothing and just, oh, my life. No, no, no. Broken. Broken. Have you ever met somebody that was just done? They're just done. No matter what you say, it's like they're just, they're just done with it. All of it. There's nothing they can do to fix it. There's nothing they can do to get They're just done with it. They may cut. They may take drugs. They may drink alcohol till they, till, till they pass out. Whatever it may be. They may get with so many different people just because, just because it's something to do. People are hurt, and they won't find the answer without Jesus. Paul, one of the greatest missionaries in the Bible, said they won't find salvation without the gospel, and they won't hear the gospel unless somebody tells them. They won't hear that Jesus can save them unless you tell them. They won't hear. That God is for them unless you tell them, guess what? I'm not at your school. Some of you guys, I'm, I'm at your school sometimes. But I'm not at your school like you're at your school. I don't know the people that you know. I don't have influence with the people that you have influence. God did not call me to save your friends. He called you to save your friends. It's the mission. And it's desperate. It's desperate times call for desperate measures. What does that mean? It means that we have to stop thinking about ourselves and start thinking about the mission. Start thinking about the mission. It's not about us anymore. Jesus said this. He said, people will know that you belong to me because of how you love each other. Sometimes it's not the people that come that are visitors and like visitors walk in. And let me tell you, when a visitor walks in here, they should feel God's love. They just should. They should feel it from you. You should be ready to smile at them. You should be ready to say hi to them. You should be ready to open, oh, uh, open, open the door and not just be like, hey, guys, you know, hey, new person over there. Why? Because you know how awkward it would be to walk into a new place and be the only one. See, they came because, whew. let me tell you guys something. When a new person walks into this building, they came because God called them. You're like, actually, I called them. <laughs> Thank you. But God was the one who got them out the front door and into this building. And if we don't care, take care of what God calls to us, we won't get to keep it. Let me tell you that I have a dream of this whole building being filled up by people that are encountering Jesus and having their lives changed. But it won't happen by just me and the leaders loving people. No, no, no. It's going to happen because you love people. Because you're ready when people walk in that you come to 418 to get something from God, yes. But you also come to 418 to give something to God. You walk into 418, Jesus, I'm ready for the mission. You walk onto your campus, Jesus, I'm ready for the mission. But here's the mess. The mess is that 
The new people are great till they become old people and drama happens. The new people are great until, until we become friends for a while. And how, I'm not going to ask you to raise your hands, but how many of you have had somebody that was like your bestest, bestest, bestest best friend who was like your enemy now? You don't have to raise your hand. Don't, don't point any elbows. They, 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 you guys were close. Drama happened. And now it's kind of like, hmm. You don't really talk to that person. You don't really like that person. Why? It's the mess. It's the mess of being with people. But the devil has a plan, and his plan is to separate us because we're stronger together. And John, can we get John up there? John chapter 17, Jesus prayed for you. He prayed for you. He said, I'm praying not only for those these disciples, meaning the ones that were with him. He said, I'm also praying for those who will believe me through their message, meaning everyone who believes down, down the ages. I'm praying for, he was praying. Mm. Jesus is in a garden about to die, and he's not saying, Father, give me strength. He's saying, Father, give people that will live 2,000 years from now strength. He's praying for you. He says, I'm praying for them. I pray that they will be one, just as you and I are one. As you are in me, Father, and I am in you, may they be in us so that the world will believe you sent me. What is he saying? The world will believe that Jesus is real when you guys and us guys are together and unified. It doesn't mean you will be best friends with everybody. It means that you will love and support your fellow followers of Jesus. And let me show you the devil's plan. I need five people. Five people, come up. Hold on, uh, Wyatt, because you talk trash. Come on. Kaylee, Kira. <laughs> That's not what I said. Have a seat. <laughs> Joey. Uh, Brett, come on. Come up on the stage. Now, I, didn't, I, I wasn't going to have everybody come up here, but let's just say that everybody in here represents one of these blocks, all right? Everybody represents one of these blocks. And so, Kaylee and Wyatt, you guys are friends, and then you get mad at each other. And, 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 and I'm so tired of Kaylee. She's always getting on my nerves. And so now, you know what? I'm out of here. I'm leaving. So just go ahead. Find your block. Which one's yours? Just take it. Just take your block. Good, 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 good. He's out. Kaylee's like, I'm out too. Find your block. Good, good, good. Kira, you're like, I'm so sick of them. Have an attitude with each other. I'm tired of them too. You take your block. <laughs> Joey, you take your block. Off of here. These people already left. They were mad at them. Brett, you take your block. Now, they tried to be smart, right? They were like, we'll just take it off the top and it won't fall. doesn't matter if it falls. It's getting smaller. And so the people who are able to complete the mission are decreasing and the devil wins. How? I get you mad at you and you mad at you. You're not willing to forgive him. He's not willing to forgive her. And so now they're gone and everybody goes, I don't want to be a part of that. People walk in and they go, I don't want to be a part of drama. I'm out. You guys have a seat. Thank you. Let me tell you something. <laughs> Go ahead, have a seat. Go ahead, have a seat. It's symbolic. Here's what I'm telling you guys. The devil has a plan. And it's to mess up your friendships. But God gave us a method to keep us together. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. Here's what he says. Paul says this. He says, therefore I, a prisoner of serving the Lord, for serving the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of your calling. What is your calling? It's Jesus getting on the metaphorical phone, calling you up, said, I have chosen you, I have picked you, and I need you to join the mission. 
Somebody tell me, what's the mission? Fisher of who? Fisher of men. To love people. To spread the gospel. That's the mission. That's your calling. That's what you're here for. Next verse. Always be humble and gentle. Do you know what humble means? Humble means it's not always about you. Humble means that you let other people have the right of way. Humble means that you would rather have somebody walk over you than break the relationship that God intended. You would rather somebody, somebody talked bad about you and go, you know what, I'm not, I'm not even going to address this thing right now. I'm just going to forgive them and move on. Instead of starting drama, with, did they say this? Are you sure that they really said this about me? Okay, I need to go ask so-and-so because they said, they said, well, you go find out. If so. No, 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 no. I'm just going to be humble. When you, when you walk into 418, it's not about me. I can go say hi to somebody that I really ever talked to because they're sitting by themselves. Because it's not about me. And gentle. When you're in connect groups. And somebody else is trying to talk about their day and how hard it was. You're like, that's nothing. That's nothing. You think you had a hard day? My day. My day was uber hard. I'm not talking about the cars. It's, it's German, I think. <laughs> you, guys, you, you guys, just be gentle with people. Allowing people to have the right. Just, just it's not always about you. It's not a, making allowance for each other's faults because of your love Th think about that you let people make mistakes because of your love for them meaning when they make a mistake I don't put them on blast I don't tell everybody I'm not tweeting about it I'm not tweeting anonymously who it was I'm not saying any names but it was so and so no you allow them their faults why because wouldn't you want somebody to do that for you? That's what God does for us all the time. Sometimes I talk to God and I go, man, I'm so glad you let me preach. Because if you only let people preach based on how good they were and how many mistakes they didn't make, I'd be, I, I would be up here. He makes allowance for your faults. That means somebody, uh, King Solomon, he was the son of David. He said this. He said, don't take it to heart when somebody talks bad about you. Check this out. He said, haven't you talked bad about people? Meaning this. You've got a friend. They make you mad. You say something bad about them. Doesn't mean you want to stop being friends. You're just mad Say so you say something. How many of you guys have ever said something about a friend just because you were mad? Did you want to stop being their friends? Not necessarily. Did you want them to find out you said it? Definitely not. But let's just say you overheard somebody talking bad about you or somebody told you they did. You make allowance for, they could have had a bad day. They could be right. I could be a loud mouth. I don't know. You, you just make allowance for people's faults. Verse 3, make every effort to keep yourselves united in the Spirit. Make every effort, every, everything that you can do to keep united with these people in the Spirit. Why does it say in the Spirit? Because you may not be best friends again. But in the Spirit, you're not enemies. In the spirit, you're not bad-mouthing these people. In the spirit, you're staying connected. I'm going to pray for that person. I know we used to be best friends, and we're not best friends anymore, and that's sad, but I am not going to talk bad about that person. And when somebody comes and talks bad about them to me, I'm shutting it down. Sometimes you just need to have time to say, you just need to say this. Oh, okay. Everybody say, oh, okay. Why? Why? Did you hear about so-and-so and blah, 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 and this and that? Hmm, okay. Whatever. 
I make allowance for their faults. I'm not going to make a big deal out of this thing. Verse 31, it says, get rid of all bitterness, all rage, anger, harsh words, slander, as well as all types of evil behavior. And here's what it says. Instead, be kind to each other. Be tenderhearted. That means be soft-hearted. Forgive one another just as God through Christ has forgiven you. It's the method. We're humble. I say this all the time, and I'm going to say it again. We have to be okay with relationship over being right. We have to want relationship over being right. Unless you want your relationships to always fail, listen to me. Boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, friends, whatever. If you want your relationships to always fail and always end badly, make being right the priority. And you will watch as every friendship that you have falls apart. Because nobody wants to be friends with somebody who has to always be right. And sometimes you just humble yourself. You say, I'd rather say sorry for something I didn't do than break relationship with this person. Guys, these are keys for life. These are, these are things that will help you all through life. But more than that, this is the method to keeping the mission. Why? Because when you're loving her and she's loving him and he's loving her and you guys are loving each other and, and you're forgiving each other and yeah, there may be fights and there may be stuff, but you, you choose to forgive over being right and you choose relationship over being right and people walk in. Do you know what happens when there's unity? The presence of God comes in. God loves unity. It doesn't mean you're best friends with everybody. It just means you love them. You care for them. Oh, this person's in. Let's rally around that person. I don't even know them, but I'll still pray for them. When people walk into that atmosphere, they go, wow, they love each other. I want to be a part of that. Let me tell you something. Real love isn't going on out there. You know what's going on out there? Do what I want. Do what I want and I'll love you. Do what I want and we'll be friends. Do what I want and we're cool with each other. But as soon as you stop, no. But that's not what God has called us to be. So here's my question. Is there somebody that you need to forgive to come back in unity in the Spirit? Is there somebody that you are currently in a fight with? Currently, you guys know that you're upset with each other. You need to go and talk to and say, listen, I'm sorry. Doesn't mean you need to be best friends again. But you're not going to be in You're not going to talk bad. You're not going to. It's, it's done. There's peace between you. You've done everything possible to bring peace between you. Here's my question. Are you committed to the mission? Or are you committed to yourself? Because if you commit to yourself, your world would get really small. And every problem will overwhelm you. But when you commit to the mission, problems, issues in life, you overcome them. Because you stop thinking, I can't. And you start thinking, I gotta. Because there's a mission. There's people out there that are hurting and need healing. There's people out there that are broken and need Jesus. And I'm the one he called up. I'm the one that, he, that said yes. When you said yes to Jesus, he said yes to you for the mission. If God has ever done anything for you, at 418 or anywhere, if God has ever, ever done anything for you, I want you to stand up.